Dear students, this is Dr. Amar Preet Kaur, a lecturer from Jammu and Kashmir Education Department. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about translation. That means protein synthesis or in another words, you can say it, it's a polymerization of amino acids into polypeptide chain. Okay, it's a very lengthy and a tedious process. Before describing the process, I want to make you familiar with ribosomes. There are two types of ribosome. One is 70S and another 80S. 70S, it is present in prokaryotes while 80S, it is present in eukaryotes. And it is having two sites. One is a P site that is also known the peptidyl site and A site or amino acyl site. Why peptidyl site? Because here a peptide bond is formed. Peptide bond is formed between two amino acid. And amino acyl, here the amino acid, it arrives. Clear? Now, the steps of translation. Translation, it is divided into three steps. Firstly, activation of amino acids. Second, it is charging of tRNA and third, it is formation of polypeptide chain. So, let's discuss step by step. Firstly, activation of amino acid. Whenever we are saying that something gets activated that needs the support of energy. So, likewise, here in activation of amino acids, we needed ATP. Okay, so with ATP, amino acids, they get activated and uh, they also require a particular enzyme which is known as amino acyl tRNA synthetases. And the smallest ions are cofactors, magnesium. And they later on, they form a complex amino acid plus AMP and enzyme, this enzyme, okay, which is amino acyl tRNA synthetases. Clear? The second step, which is charging of tRNA, this activated amino acid, it gets active, uh, it gets attached with tRNA. And uh, what we will get? We will get the charged tRNA. So, Amino acid, AMP, and E complex, it will uh, get attached with tRNA and it forms amino acid and, and tRNA, which is charged. Clear? Now we have activated, or you can say, the charged tRNA. The final step is the formation of polypeptide chain. This is also a tedious step, so it is divided into three steps. One is a chain initiation, another chain elongation, and chain termination. So, let's begin with chain initiation. What is happening over here? The smallest ribosome, ribosomal subunit, which is 30S and 40S. 30S in prokaryotes and 40S in eukaryotes. Okay? This smaller subunit of ribosome, it will get attached with messenger RNA and forms a complex, which is 30S mRNA complex. And what will be the complex in eukaryotes? It will be 40S mRNA complex. Clear? The next step, it will be addition of this 30S mRNA complex with charged tRNA. Students, the charged tRNA, it will be formulated in prokaryotes and non-formulated in eukaryotes. And this formulation, the formyl group, it will get attached with methionine. Okay? And methionine is the first amino acid which begins the uh, translation. Clear? Any doubt? 
So 30S mRNA complex, it will get attached with tRNA um, and it requires GTP for the because a bond is formed between 30S mRNA and uh, tRNA. Okay, so what we will get? We will get 30S mRNA and charged tRNA which is formulated in prokaryotes and non-formulated in eukaryotes. Beside the requirement of GTP, we also need certain initiation factors. In prokaryotes, we need um, three initiation factors, while in eukaryotes, we need nine initiation factors. Clear? Now, the third step will be the attachment of larger subunit of ribosome. What will be the larger subunit? It will be 50S in prokaryotes and 60S in eukaryotes. Is it clear? Now, there will be chain elongation. After the formation of this complex, that I have mentioned earlier that 30S mRNA and tRNA and amino acyl acceptor site that is A site. Okay. It gets established beside the P point or P site which is peptidal site. Then a new amino acyl tRNA complex. Okay. That I have already discussed which is actually the charging of tRNA, the tRNA along with some other kind of amino acid, it reaches at the A site and it forms codon-anticodon bonding. Okay. This requires energy and energy it comes from GTP and it also needs certain elongation factors. Now students, there is a peptide bond formation. The first amino acid was methionine, okay? It forms a peptide bond with the second amino acid. This step, it needs a important enzyme that is known as peptidyl transferases. With the help of peptidyl transferases, a bond is formed, okay? Now, there is the elongation factors which are very important for the translocation. Translocation, it means movement of ribosome on mRNA. Uh, C, mRNA, it is a constant. It is position is a constant. But what is moving for, um, adding, uh, for making a polypeptide chain? It is the ribosomes. Okay. The ribosomes, they move from codon to codon along with the mRNA. And the amino acids, they are added one by one. Clear? So now the ribosomes, they move. Um, sorry, it is a single ribosome. It moves from codon to codon along with the mRNA chain. Okay? And uh, amino acids, they are added one by one. So in this way, a polypeptide chain, it is formed and it is dictated by DNA because uh, mRNA, it has a complementary copy of DNA. Okay. It is synthesized from DNA. So a point is reached where there is a termination of polypeptide chain. That means the stoppage of polypeptide chain. Uh, there are three termination codons, um, namely UAA, UAG and UGA. And a GTP dependent factor, um, which are very important, Okay, for the release of um, polypeptide chain. These release factor RF1 and RF2, they are present in prokaryotes. And in eukaryotes, we have eukaryotic releasing factor. In this way, the translation, it is stopped or terminated. Thank you for listening to this lecture. If you have doubts, uh, certainly I am sure. Um, certainly there will be. So you can post me to my website, which is www.amarpreetcode.com.